a very funny man who hosts the improv comedy show Palindrome Fight, the intellectual stylings of Mark Solfite, ladies and gentlemen. Big round of applause for Mark Solfite. <laughs> So I fight against the ravages of time by studying history. And uh, instead of doing a comedy set, I'm going to share uh, the story of an amazing character who I'm working on uh, for a book I'm writing about the history of palindromes, in case you need my geek credentials established there. Uh, this guy's name is Sotadis the Obscene, and he lived in Alexandria, Egypt, about 300 BC in the shadow of the great... Library of Alexandria. And that Ptolemaic kingdom of Egypt, ruled by Greek people, was at the time the wealthiest and most learned society that had ever existed on earth. And uh, Sotades was one of the leading court poets of the time. In addition to palindromes, he also invented written pornography and the hip hop of his day which was an underground street poetry written in the slang of a group of people called the Kenaidoi. The Kenaidoi were transgender dancers who uh, dressed as women and wore makeup and jewelry and sang songs and danced in the street, uh, as one professor put it, waggling their butts as if inviting company. And... It, this seems, you know, you might think, so what? It's just like drag queens. But you have to understand how weird ancient Greek culture was about gender and sexuality. Like, you've probably heard that it was not uncommon for uh, younger adolescent boys to have relationships with older dudes, sexual relationships, but it was also kind of a mentor thing. They would eventually introduce them to society and often even marry them to their daughters. And uh, But the thing is, that was not considered queer in their day because they had very rigid codes of manliness. And that was more just kind of like wrestling with some incidental penetration from time to time. <laughs> the, but even at that time, it was completely taboo for a man to act feminine in public in any way. And women just weren't even seen. They were locked up in the house and not really allowed to go out in public, which is why the older, younger guy uh, relationship thing was going on. So Sotades wrote poetry in the lingo of the Kenaidoi, who were the only public effeminate men ever, and it was incredibly scandalous and outrageous. The, a, a thing that helps you think of it is um, they were considered very sexy. Like uh, the traditional Greek man was manly and you know didn't sleep around and whatever, except maybe with a slave, but that didn't count. Uh, but uh, the the Kenaidoi were completely oversexed and they slept with everybody. They were like a total threat to seduce your wife. Think of like uh, you know in Rocky Horror Picture Show, Tim Curry's character Frank and Furter. <laughs> That's pretty much what the Kenaidoi were like in a totally rigid, manly, like army guy society. So they were, it was completely forbidden and, and, and outrageous. So Professor James Davidson of the University of Warwick described Sotades as the world's first fully formed queer outlaw writer, a sort of like Genet, a guy who rewrote the Iliad, the great manly classic, in his own entire effeminate skippier rhythm or meter. But the thing is, he was not just a gender outlaw, he was also a vicious political satirist. So maybe think of Lenny Bruce or Doug Stanhope mixed with Ziggy Stardust <laughs> to kind of get the effect. I mean, he cut quite a figure. Uh, and so uh, the king, King Ptolemy II, married Arsinoe II, uh, who happened to be a sister. So that was awkward. Uh, and it was quite a scandal at the time, but everyone was too afraid of the king to say anything. So some poets like Theocritus were just like kissing his ass like, oh, she loveth him twice as much as any wife, as sister and wife both. And Sotides was having none of it. Uh, but what he did was he went to their actual wedding in front of them and delivered a poem kind of like a wedding toast. And he started out making it sound similarly flowery and positive, talking about, oh, the great god Zeus married his sister Hera, too. And on and on he goes, until the final line where there's a little bit of a twist, and his punchline translates roughly to, 
you are thrusting your prick into an unholy hole. It was a little more subtle than that in Greek, but not a lot, and clearly not enough, uh, because Sotades was executed and all of his works were destroyed, and the only reason we know about him was either people going stories like, don't be stupid and insult the king to his face, or people quoted a few snippets of his work in other books, like the, you're thrusting your prick into an unholy hole. It's catchy. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, for obvious reasons, Sotades is one of my great heroes because he reminds us that even if you're completely forgotten, some geek can research you 2,000 years later and then sort of bring you back to life in the ravages of time. And obviously, given my success rate so far, that's my great hope at this point. All right, thank you very much.